this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We have a lesson today, and I want you to hear this, because this lesson will give you some serious keys to navigate through your life, through the quandaries, through the vicissitudes, through the hassles, through the frustrations, dealing with ourselves even. Okay. <clears throat> now, we're going to deal with two issues. Make it three. Sin, that's of the flesh, just dealing with things of the flesh. Infirmities, that's of the flesh, dealing with things, our idiosyncrasies, okay? And number three, we're going to deal with trials, all right? Now, through these, I have a short list. I want you to hear it because we're going to deal with this over the next few videos. We're going to deal with the purging process the pruning process, the purifying process, and the forging process. Whoa, Nelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a happy subject, but highly necessary. Along with the necessary evils that God allows to happen in our lives to help us get it together. All right. Now, if you really want to hear this, if you really want to grow, you will stay tuned. If you don't, and you want a pancake, carnival experience with God, move right along, switch to another channel, because this is going to tell you the truth. All right, here we go. I'm going to read a scripture to you, and I want you to hear what God has to say about purification, cleansing, Listen, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 14, this is why the Old Testament is very, very important. God, through his Holy Spirit, revealed this to me as part of our purification. Listen, starting at verse 34, when ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession. Let me stop there, Pat's two cents. Imagine Canaan as your life. You're going in to possess your life. You're taking your life back. All right. Now, when ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest go into it to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made clean. And afterward the priest shall go in to see the house, and he shall look on the plague, and behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house with the hollow streaks, greenish and reddish, which is in sight, are lower than the walls. In other words, in the grooves of the wall. Then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. Now, listen, let me stop right there, Pat's two cents. Go with me to James, James chapter 5, verse 14, excuse me, yeah, 14 through 16. Listen to this. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man 
availeth much. This is why we cannot live, Pat's two cents. This is why we cannot live a life of Christianity flying solo. God has set up a system, and I want you to understand, God has set up a system, an accountability system, a system of support, a system of training, teaching, correction. All of this is set up within the body of Christ. So when you're going through life and all of its challenges, you have to know that you need the help and the support of the body. The elders, those that are way ahead of you in experience and connection with God. In order to help us navigate through our challenges, we need those who are far more experienced than we are at getting the victory over this mess. So, when you're going through the purification, I'm going to go back to Leviticus because I want you to hear this. When you're going through the, uh, the Leviticus, when you're going through the purification process, you're going through the cleansing. See, okay, let me go back to the beginning. When you first give your heart to the Lord, you are not instantly healed, cleansed, purified, uh, you're not all that in a bag of chips. You are just beginning. It's like a patient that goes into the hospital. You first have to go in. So now you're in Christ. But after you go in, that's when all the examinations, the blood tests, the x-rays, you're calling for the elders to examine your house. See if there's leprosy in your house. Leprosy is also another form of sin, another symbol of sin, of, of, of uh, 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 hang-ups, of impure ways. Of I mean, just put all that in that package. Because you need extra eyes. You need supernatural vision to help you discern what's really going on inside of you. That's why many of us go to Christian counseling. Because through Christian counseling, the Holy Spirit will reveal you to you and me to me. Now, when you're going through stuff and life is hitting you on every side, you need more eyes, you need more ears, you need more wisdom around you than what you have. So you have to go for help. Now, I know this sounds like, okay, when is she going to get to the point? This is part of the point, but I'm going to go further into detail. Part of this is called the purification process. That's one of those things we really, truly hate. One of the things that happens with purification is the scum floats to the surface when heat is applied. And when you feel like you're being raked over the coals and you feel like you are being cooked to death, that is part of your purification process. Don't jump out the pot. God's not going to kill you. He's going to kill your flesh. He's going to burn it up. He's going to purify it. He's going to purge it. He's going to boil that scum until it all comes to the surface. Then he's going to skim it off and toss it down the drain because you don't need any of that. Now, are you ready to be purified? Are you ready to grow? Do you really want to die to yourself? And live to Christ. Do you really want to deny yourself? Take up your cross and follow him. Do you really, really, at all costs, want Jesus before any other? Really? Mm. I'm having a thought and I'm like, Lord, do you want me to say all this? 
you look at the pictures of the people you're involved with, whether it's in your mind or on a piece of paper. You look at your body parts. You look at the things you get involved with. Oh, I'm trying to keep this as clean as I can keep it. What are you willing to deny? What desires, yearnings, longings? What are you willing to push aside for the sake of God? See, the walk with Christ is not for the mamby-pamby. The walk of Christ is not for the wimp. The straight and narrow way <coughs> is for those of you, excuse me, who are serious, not playing Christianity, not wearing a cross around your neck as a good luck charm, not carrying a Bible under your arm as an accessory when you go to church. Are you serious? And that's my question. I'm not going into any more of this right now. Because this is going to be a long subject. And I have to come back with some more videos. So you have to come back and watch. If you really are serious. Because I'm not going to play. We may have to break some bones. To reset some bones. So that you can heal correctly and use that bad boy. I'll be back. Will you?